the god of thunder. Folks say that Raiden, the thunder, is an unloving spirit, fearful and revengeful, cruel to man. These are folks who are mortally afraid of the storm and who hate lightning and tempest. They speak all the evil they can of Raiden and of Raitoro, his son. But they're wrong. Raiden Sama lived in a castle of clouds set high in the blue heaven. He was a great and almighty god, a lord of the elements. Raitaro was his one and only son, a brave boy, and his father loved him. In the cool of the evening, Raiden and Raitaro walked upon the ramparts of the castle of cloud, and from the ramparts they viewed the doings of man upon the land of reed plains. North and south and east and west they looked. Often they laughed. Oh, very often they laughed. Sometimes they sighed. Sometimes Raitaro leaned far over the castle walls to see children that went to and fro upon the earth. One night, Raiden-sama said to Raitaro, Child, look well this night upon the doings of men. Raitaro answered, Father, I will look well. From the north rampart they looked and saw great lords and men-at-arms going forth to battle. From the southern rampart they looked and saw priests and acolytes serving in a holy temple where the air was dim with incense, and images of gold and bronze gleamed in the twilight. From the eastern rampart they looked and saw ladies bower, where was a fair princess and a troop of maidens clad in rose color that made music for her. There were children there, too, playing with a little cart of flowers. Ah, the pretty children, said Raitaro. From the western rampart they looked and saw a peasant toiling in a rice field. He was very weary, and his back ached. His wife toiled with him by his side. If he was weary, it is to believe that she was more weary still. They were very poor, and their garments were ragged. Have they no children? said Raitaro. Raiden shook his head. Have you looked well, Raitaro? he said. Have you looked well this night upon the doings of men? Father, said Raitaro, indeed I have looked well. Then choose, my son, choose, for I send you to take up your habitation upon the earth. Must I go among men? said Raitaro. My child, you must. I will not go with the men at arms, said Raitaro. Fighting makes me very ill. Oh, say you so, my son, say you so, my son. Will you go then to the fair lady's bower? No, said Raitaro. I am a man. Neither will I have my head shaved to go and live with the priest. What then do you choose? The poor peasant? You will have a hard life and a scanty fare, Raitaro. Raitaro said, They have no children. Perhaps they will love me. Go in peace said Raiden Sama, for you have chosen wisely. How shall I go, my father? said Raitaro. Honorably, said his father, as it befits a prince of high heaven. Now the poor peasant man toiled in his rice field, which was at the foot of the mountain Hakusan in the province of Ichizen. Day after day and week after week the bright sun shone. The rice field was dry, and young rice was burnt up. Alack and alas, cried the poor peasant man, and what shall I do if my rice crops fails? May the dear gods have mercy on all poor people. With that, he sat himself down on a stone at the rice field's edge and fell asleep for very weariness and sorrow. When he woke up, the sky was black with clouds. It was but noonday, but it grew as dark as night. The leaves of trees shuddered together, and the birds ceased their singing. Storm! A storm! cried the peasant. 
you right in! Lord of all the sky, thank you. You have saved us. The skies have opened and the crops will grow with all the gratefulness and great delight of this earth. Thank you. Rain and plenty he had sure enough, for it fell in torrents with blinding lightning and roaring thunder. lay on the ground and hid his face. Howbeit the thunder dragon spared him, and soon he sat up and rubbed his eyes. The ball of fire was gone, but a babe lay upon the wet earth. A fine, fresh boy with the rain upon his cheeks and his hair. <laughs> oh, lady, quite on, lady, quite said the poor peasant man. This is thy sweet mercy. And he took the boy in his arms and carried him to his own home. As he went, the rain still fell, but the sun came out in the blue sky, and every flower in the cooler air shone and lifted up its grateful head. The peasant came to his cottage door. Wife! Wife! he called. I have brought you something home. What may it be? said his wife. The man answered, Raitaro, the little eldest son of the thunder. Raitaro grew up straight and strong, the tallest, gayest boy of all that countryside. He was the delight of his foster parents and all the neighbors loved him. When he was ten years old, he worked in the rice fields like a man. He was the wonderful weather prophet. My father, he said, let us do this and that, for we shall have fair weather. Or he said, my father, let us rather do this or that, for tonight there will be a storm. And whatever he said, so sure enough it came to pass, and he brought great good fortune to the poor peasant man, and all his work prospered. When Raitaro was eighteen years old, the neighbors were bidden to his birthday feast. There was plenty of good sake, and the good folk were merry enough, only Raitaro was silent and sad and sorry. What ails you, Raitaro? said his foster mother. You who are want to be the happiest of the happy. Why are you so silent, sad and worry? It is because I must leave you, said Raitaro. Nay, said his mother. Never leave us, Raitaro, my son. Why would you leave us? Mother, because I must, said Raitaro in tears. You have been our great good fortune. You have given us all things. What have I given you? What have I given you, Raitaro, my son? Raitaro answered, Three things have you taught me. To labor, to suffer, and to love. I am more learned than the immortals. Then he went from them. And in the likeness of a white cloud, he scaled heaven's blue height till he gained his father's castle. And Raiden received him. The two of them stood upon the western rampart of the castle of cloud and looked down upon the earth. The foster mother stood weeping bitterly, but her husband took her hand. My dear, he said, it will not be for long. We grow old apace. pace.